Greetings, Soul Family. My name is Vashita Das, and I assist people with self-improvement and spiritual growth. If you're new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications below if you want to see more content like this. Because today, what we're going to be talking about is Siddhartha Gautama, more commonly known as the Buddha. And essentially, we will be speaking on his most important teaching, arguably, that he had during his incarnation here on Earth. But as of this video being live, I do want to let you know that workshop tickets are available for my Awaken Today Masterclass Tour going on this summer through July and August. I will be going to six cities here on the West Coast in the United States, specifically Denver, Phoenix, Las Vegas, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. So if you're near any of those cities or you wanna come out to these events, they're gonna be two to three hour intensive workshop events with a lot of amazing growth techniques and practices thrown in that you can read more about below. So if you wanna get tickets, again, click the link in my bio or in my comments and come join so many other beautiful seekers on this amazing journey. But back to the topic at hand, we are speaking on the Buddha and his most important teaching. And if you ask pretty much any Buddhist practitioner what it was the Buddha discovered, what it was he taught that was so important, they'll let you know that it was one thing, that suffering can be ceased, that we can remove suffering from our lives and liberate ourselves from this cycle of samsara. And that was the biggest thing in his life, was the recognition, the awakening to, the realization of what we call in Buddhist philosophy, the Four Noble Truths. And if you've never heard of the Four Noble Truths, they are as such. The first truth that the Buddha realized sitting underneath the Bodhi tree during his awakening process was that Dukkha exists, as it's called. Now, Dukkha can be translated into English sort of as suffering, but it also just kind of means pain or, or, or discontentment, dis-ease, disharmony, so to speak, that it exists in life and that that is a truth of life. But the second noble truth was where the breakthrough began to happen. This realization and teaching by the Buddha was that dukkha or suffering comes through craving. It is only existent due to our cravings, due to our clingings, due to our attachments in the material form to anything and everything at all that we simply cannot accept as impermanent, as temporary, and is all changing. The third noble truth after this says that although dukkha or suffering exists due to our attachments and clingings and cravings, it can be cease. We can stop this suffering altogether. And the fourth noble truth goes on to say that we cease this suffering. We liberate ourselves from suffering by following the eightfold path, the eightfold virtues of righteousness in all aspects of life, or in the eight major aspects of life that we can, if we can come to practice consistently and keep at the forefront of our awareness, allow us to transcend suffering completely while still living in the bodily form. And that is what it means to attain nirvana, to realize this truth and free yourself from the confines of the body-mind complex. This is the most important truth and the most important message the Buddha ever left us. And what was so vastly beautiful about it was that when he had this realization under the Bodhi tree in ancient India, he actually traveled hundreds of kilometers to Sarnath, a small Buddhist pilgrimage and city outside of Varanasi, one of the most holy cities in India that I actually visited when I was there in January. And he gave specifically this sermon on the Four Noble Truths once he arrived in Sarnath to a beautiful, massive crowd of seeking souls to allow them to know for themselves what the Four Noble Truths were and what this most important message he could provide was what his awakening truly gave to the world were the Four Noble Truths. Now, if you want to know more about the Eightfold Path and where the Four Noble Truths go, you can go to my channel and watch my playlist on Buddhism for Beginners. I have four to five different videos that go over pretty much every aspect of it. Uh, please go check that out. But the reason I think this is the most important message and the reason I want you guys to really ruminate and think and process how beautiful this truth is, how beautiful it is to not only know there is suffering, but also to figure out where this suffering stems from and thusly dissipate it 
allow it to fade away, move beyond it, is because of a few really important reasons that oftentimes I think we gloss over or don't give enough focus to or meditate enough on. And if we did, it could really help us a lot in life. So one of the main reasons it's important is because point blank, nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wakes up and wants to suffer. No one wakes up and wants to be in pain. No one wants to start their day and have horrible things happen to them. Even at, at, at the most even at the deepest level, people that are hedonistic and sadistic and, and get pleasure from pain aren't there just to partake in pain. They want goodness or joy or growth or, or a beautiful experience out of pain, out of suffering, out of negativity. But they're not just looking for those negative factors or suffering factors. So it's important to realize that because of this teaching, because of this message, it reminds us that, yeah, I don't wanna suffer. Why do I put up with suffering? Why do I accept suffering? I don't have to accept that at all. Why don't I take back my own resounding strength, my own liberation, and free myself from it? Because I have the power to do so. And going along with this, the beauty of these teachings is that when we think that, when we go, yeah, I wanna take back my own sovereignty. I wanna know and show and live free from suffering and enjoy life and, and love everything I do. Before these teachings came, there were so many different methods and there still are so many different methods, but for many people, they got caught up in these methods or they would simply not understand why they suffered. We can easily say, yeah, I don't wanna suffer, but how do I transcend my suffering? And how do I transcend my ego's need to transcend my suffering, right? How do I not cling to wanting to get out of something? Because even wanting to get out of it is a desire in its own right. This is a very confusing thing for lots of religious practices unless they are seen from a very neutral and non-attached standpoint. Whether it be Hinduism, Judaism, or Islam, they all have a lot of easy ways we can get caught up in it. And that's why the beauty of the Four Noble Truths came to fruition is because it was a middle path. It was a place that would allow us to, if we could not find balance in the modes of gods and religions and different cultural practices that got very deep and colorful, we could come into the pure philosophy of these Four Noble Truths and utilize it to transcend this suffering. We could see where it was coming from and see it as real and not get caught up in everything around it. Along with this, the beauty of the Four Noble Truths in this teaching is that it shows us how to transcend and remove suffering for the duration of this incarnation. Because so many different ways we have in modern life right now, and that can be misrepresented misrepresented by modern teachers and modern things, is, is, is solutions to suffering that are very temporary <clears throat> whether those be drugs, compounds, different breathing practices, they're all temporary practices. A lot of different things give us temporary resolution or temporary freedom from suffering. But what can I do to transcend suffering on an extended scale, on a scale of an entire lifetime? The Four Noble Truth and the following of the Eightfold Path was a way and one of the first true shining lights into a method that worked on a long-term basis. Now, there are lots of other paths that work as well. For me specifically, the path of Vedanta and Advaita and understanding and meditating on the non-dual nature of my own awareness uh, works beautifully. But for the Buddha and many people who heard his lectures and sermons for the first time, this was an absolutely transcendental realization that, wow, I don't have to just settle for small solutions to my suffering, but that I can work on this solution that lasts a lifetime, that is an extended solution that serves me and serves my dharma as well. And finally, like I said about getting caught in the things around uh, different religions and ideas and practices for moving beyond suffering, the Four Noble Truths are just so simple, right? It's four truths, that's it. Four truths with one answer at the end. This is how you do it. And you use these eight methods. That's it. That's really the core of Buddhist philosophy. Now, since that time, there have been more bodhisattvas, more Buddhas, more awakened souls that have added tons and tons of different methods and practices and realizations and, and philosophy to what it means to be a Buddhist and what it means to live and thrive and, and enjoy and suffer. But this was the core of the teaching. This was his most important method, but method was look, if you can't find a path like bhakti or jnana yoga or karma yoga in Hinduism, if you don't feel your path in, in, in the Western sense of religion. Well, here is a cut and dry, simple solution that doesn't require any belief system. It is simply a method of practice. Take it and use it as you will. 
that clarity, that simplicity is why Buddhism serves so many people and why it's so helpful, especially for beginners on their path. And it's why I think that the Four Noble Truths are one of the most important realizations and, and things you can know when entering into the realm of spiritual practice or self-growth and, and inner evolution. And that is specifically also why I think it is the Buddha's most important teaching that he left the world and that we can ruminate on and utilize to grow in life and move forward. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little video just on what the Buddha's most important message was and why. So that is that. Thank you guys for listening and joining in. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Ram Ram.